The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. All discussion is limited to publicly available information and should not be interpreted as legal, professional or financial advice. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license nor provide any financial services. Before making investment decisions, you should obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Hello, my name's James Wrigley. I'm a financial advisor and one of the principals of Melbourne-based financial planning firm, First Financial. I've been a long-term listener and contributor to the Ensemble Group and podcast, picking up some amazing nuggets of gold over the years. And through this podcast and the people that I'm able to speak to and interview, hopefully I can continue to deliver some of those nuggets of gold to you. We have entered a new era of advice with a continuing advisor migration towards smaller and boutique licensees. This new era places a premium on professional development, sustainability, and efficiency. But many smaller practices are finding these goals increasingly out of reach, as it becomes harder to access CPD in a way that is both affordable and makes efficient use of their time. The Ensemble All Licensee Professional Development Day was created to meet this challenge. Born from the thinking of the Ensemble Advisor community, it's a licensee agnostic, one-day CPD event giving you access to 10 hours of CPD accredited content from leading industry experts. You can join this event virtually or join us in Sydney for the in-studio experience. To register, head to ensemble.com forward slash ALPD. Hello, welcome back to the podcast. I have Ryan King, Three Kings Wealth Management on the the screen here. We're recording on Teams. Uh, Ryan, thank you for for joining me. Followed you on Instagram for a while. Good to good to get a podcast done with you. Thanks, mate. Appreciate being on again. Uh, uh, so you've done this before, as I said. We we're just saying you had a chat with Ben a little while ago when he was when he was hosting it. What's the? I would I haven't asked you this. What's in the name? Like, what's the reference to Three Kings? What does the Three Kings come from? Well, <laughs> there's a few reasons. It changes over time. Um, now I've got two sons. I just tell them it's me and my two sons. But um, the way it started, so Three Kings is. One of my favorite movies of all time. Okay, I'm not sure. Do you know the movie? No, I'm gonna to have to write it down here and watch it after. Ice Cube, uh, George Clooney. Oh, thank you. Wahlberg, and it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a parody on the the Iraqi war. Uh, okay. So they go and steal gold from Saddam Hussein. Being three kings, being the three three wise men in a biblical sense. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Jesus as a baby. So it's, there was that that movie, and I was like, oh, I really like it. Plus, at the time, I was building the business and. I always want something with my name in it. There's like Royal Finance and all this garbage. Sorry to anyone's name is Royal Finance, but like it was too cliche. So I was like, then I'll do it. And then um, to come up with the the three, we have three steps to, to success and everything, all our marketing, which everything was three, this, three, that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I did know I wanted to have two boys at some stage. So I was also planning for that. But then the the biblical term of which the movie triggered was, you know, three, three wise men, three kings, the people who brought, riches to Jesus as a baby and I wanted to be like, well that's what I'm doing for my clients is mm-hmm. that what I started. That was as all yep. tied into one. And I thought, yep. that's cool. We'll do that. Um and here we are. Yeah. And then as you said, you can uh, you can kind of then use that as a your, your three step process for this thing or your three step process for that. It's whether that was intentional at the time, but you can then leverage that for other bits that you're doing within the business. It worked out good because I never had a favorite number my whole life. I always went with 13 because I like being, you know, it's everyone's unlucky number. So unlucky. Like, that was my mum's favorite number. I just took it on. Now it's three. So I have the number. Great. <laughs> my life easy for you. So what's the setup of your business like now? Is it like, like where are you at the moment? Because you moved, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm up on the central coast, New South Wales at the moment, yeah. um, which has never really mattered. We've, we've got an office at Norwest. We've got an office at Erinau. Just like part time offices that we use if we need. Yeah, uh, I work from home predominantly. Yeah, I work from home. Um, and then we sort of like I travel around, but most things are done online. So yeah. we've got clients all over the country, some international for work, they're moving in and out kind of thing that we live this with. And um, yeah, other than that, everything's online. So I'll duck out and see a client or two in person, but I'll we'll jump on the road and like we'll do a family like this year. We did Queensland, Victoria. Um, northern New South Wales, um, you know, Western New South Wales. So we did like family holidays around the sequence. Yeah, I was going to ask, gonna, I was gonna ask do you, do you tie in the family with all of that too, rather than you go off and do some work and leave the kids at home. You, you yeah, we do. Trying to the trip. That's the idea, but I, I don't know if we'll do it anymore. That was the whole idea. We thought we'd do it, but we did Philippines a couple of years ago as well. Like, yeah. yeah. Off we go. 
um, which was a part work trip. And then um, I, I just, I, I'm going to, moving forward, we're probably going to keep everything separate. Like it's just, we, our latest trip up north for work and we had like weddings and stuff, we tried to mix it on. It was just too much. It just wasn't <laughs> enjoyed. So I think we're going to, uh, we're going to se- segregate the two from that this year on. Yeah. And your wife's got her own business as well, does she? Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, I've seen from your Instagram too. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll say like we we own all of our companies under our trust, like under our, our group of companies, which is under our trust, obviously. And then um, yes. we run. So we 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 sort of I manage the business side; she runs the the actual skill set side of it. And yeah, that's a that's that's my favorite business at the moment. It's a I shouldn't say that on here, but that's a yeah. um, that's the one that that's got so much potential. It's a design business, and yeah, it does really really well. So yeah, um, that's real fun. That's a fun one. Yeah. And so you, can you talk a bit about the different businesses that you do have? Like I saw you you put a post on LinkedIn or something this morning or I saw it this morning because I pay all these people congratulating you on a new job. By the way, you, you're still operating through Kingswell. Yeah, you know, like, we, just, we just launched a, a, like I've got a marketing team now for all the businesses. So we've got like a, uh, an accounting like under the, the King Group Enterprises, which is our, our parent company um, that, uh, that, own, that has a marketing team, an accounting team, um, <laughs> to make sure that all the businesses, all that shit that when you're a single operator, you know, you're able to do. So you're trying to do that with, you finally get out of that position with your your main business being financial advisory and then you start all these startups, you're like, oh, I'm going to go through all that again. So we just launched an accounting department and a marketing department to take care of all that. Um, and we put together this new marketing strategy, which finally for those, I've never wanted to be on LinkedIn for three kings. Um, it's never really served its purpose for my, my target client. But for all these other businesses, we wanted to be on there for for their target clients. So we sort of launched a relaunching a thing, and they're telling me how to link up my new businesses into my LinkedIn profile and keeps notifying. You know, this person started a new job, and people are like, "Oh, good luck on on the next chapter of your career." I'm like, "Oh, like <laughs> not a next chapter of your But I'm sure there's a few people out there too going, "Ah, he failed, he quit." Like, yeah, yeah. So is that so the accounting and the marketing stuff that you just launched is that? Like, is that an internal thing or is it you, you'll offer accounting services as part of your kind of king group? I wish, bro. I wish we will. Actually, that's a plan for next year. We've got a, we've got a, a talk with an account at the moment to launch that. But yeah. um, no, so we have, so the, the king group enterprise owns three kings is our primary. And they each have, what people don't realize about the business is like our philosophy at three kings is people should invest the way they know, like, understand and where they have a skill set. If they have a skill set, they can manufacture some wealth and they let them sleep at night and they enjoy it, right? And People always come and we have our foundations, you know, we do our, our, our super for the later and we get their home and we do the bonds and that stuff. And then past that point where people then get into multiple properties and that stuff, we really pick our, our, our I guess, our asset, asset class, depending on the person. And mm. that's our philosophy, not properties better than shares or shares, like nothing like that, right? It's, it's just picking the right asset class for that person. And for me, this is where we say practice what we preach. The reason I started the businesses was business is my favorite thing. Like I, I'll never stop working. I like, I like doing that dabbling in all these different things. And I love my favorite part of Three Kings was building it from the ground. Like I love startups. I love doing that stuff. And yeah, there was all these things that I was like, man, what am I doing? I'm investing in shares and I'm oh, we're about to buy a property and all this stuff. And I was like, I'm kind of going against my philosophy, right? Like I want everyone to do the things they love and I'm just conforming to what I think is going to make money in the short term. So I was like, you know what? Let's scale back. Let's get our SMSF set up. Let's do do the stuff we're going to do there and everything. But then let, let's get into business. So let me do that. Like there's some things I really want to do. And if I'm spending six grand a month over here investing, well, what about if I did it over here? You know what I mean? Like what if I if that's excess? Why don't I do it over here? So <laughs> first one we launched was um first one we launched was the offshore company, which was just simply between me and um two other two Filipino ladies who live in Australia. Um and the idea of that was I was already spending a lot of money on offshoring and I wanted to keep it in-house and be able to donate to the, the, their communities, right? So help them build their communities and stuff. And that was the idea. Um, we ended up getting a couple of clients on board, like like from each one of our other existing businesses that, you know, wanted to do some ad hoc work. So we, we have bookkeeping and content creation, all that stuff from our offshoring team in these departments that people, you know, we only do one-off kind of thing. So we don't, we're not like an agency. We don't get you at a, so things like startups might come and say, hey, I just want to get this you know, this content created. And you know, sweet, chuck it in like a lower rate kind of thing. So we did that. And that was just a cost-saving tool and just trying to you know help out that community. So the purpose of that was give back to you know to a community kind of thing. Um, then I launched the coffee, which is probably my favorite business, the 3628, um, which is the, the pure plan that's, that's got two other owners as well. So we all went and we've all got our own businesses. And the funnest part about having a side hustle when you've got 
a major business already is that it's just fun. Like it's not like I said, if when I meet go to coffee things and that I meet other people who do it, that was their only thing. I'm like, how bad is every perform under the like you make make five, ten bucks a bag of coffee? Like, oh, what are you it's crazy. Like yeah. I couldn't imagine launching that with all the stress and pressure. I didn't have money already, you know? So yeah. that's that we we joke. We say that's our lifestyle brand. That that business is either going to get bankrupt or we're going to buy a private jet. There's no in between. Like the, the, we've got a business plan. The first business plan is once we hit a certain target, which are actually not not heaps far off this year compared to last year. But and then we're all going to go and get like a different color of the same like luxury car, and like that'll fund our luxury car, and we'll go on business trips and stuff like that. Like it's it's pure lifestyle. It's nothing else, you know. Yeah. Um. Yep. And it's fun. And so we're doing that one. That that's probably my, my favorite, the branding side of it. Um. And then then I bought uh well started Three Kings Wellness, which is Got a bit of expansion next year thinking about, but it's the cryotherapy chamber out in Penrith. Yep. From I grew up out there and dad still lives out there. Dad, um, you know, he, he loved it. He loves the cryotherapy as a treatment for me. He's a, a medically discharged veteran. Um, and it helped him heaps with some stuff and real passionate. And I just a lot of the athletes and stuff that I work with train out that way. So I wanted a a place to build a community. So not just like I wanted to be a staple in the community, not just give back and yeah. yeah build a thing out there and so you know that's where i started fighting that's really where i started boxing and everything like that so there's a lot of people from around there so we did that um it doesn't make any money cost me an arm and a leg but um its purpose is to be part of that community which funnily enough you know we got nathan clear and his fiance in this week and um <laughs> they jumped in and they loved it and we were sponsoring heaps of world-class athletes like yeah world champions in, in boy yeah, Brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah i've seen it yeah yeah, well, these people there. So we're sponsoring a lot of people, and that's the purpose. As long as I get it to break even and pay dad, you know, pay dad what he needs to get paid if he wants to work out of there. And if we can do that, I don't care what it makes. So the purpose of that is just community. Yeah. Um, the memorabilia business, which is, <laughs> yeah, so the memorabilia, which our whole idea of the memorabilia business was trying to get three kings in front of more charities just to do more golf days, really. That was yeah. the real thing being it. But, um, so I bought the memorabilia, but it's taken off on a world of its own kind of thing. You know, people kind of like that stuff. So that's we've got that off to the side as well. Um, we still do the charity days and everything like that, but it's got its own thing as well. And then, yeah, Gemma launched Design Code, uh, which is our her, her essentially her, her like um, mainstay, I guess, so her little mm-hmm. thing. Where she, after she had Bob, you know, she's qualified in all those areas and she just wasn't so good where she was working. I thought, why am I having all the fun? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And Gemma, my wife, she's very needs a stable income, you know, very conservative like that. And she was petrified. So we launched it and it's the best one. It'll be the way we said we said three kings does like pays our pays our, our mortgage, pays out, you know, all of our, our basic stuff, gets us our bills and everything like that. Then the design code is, is our extras on top of that. Like it's our that's our we get our hmm. area wealth side of things. Yeah, which is really cool because because before we add that, you know, that's what the businesses on my side were going to be. But now we've actually got we can go back and contributing to you know, extra into other investments and diversify a bit more. So they've all got their purpose. The rest are just, yeah, neutrality will be happy and just build mm-hmm. community. But yeah, those two have got their own purpose, which they're working with, which is great. Yeah. They have to, how do you find time to run the, the financial advice business with all of this that you've got going on? Yeah, it was hard at the start, man. And I, I think um, I was probably going through a manic episode at the time. But um, yeah. I <laughs> I just, I did bit off way more than I could chew, way more. I did, I shouldn't. Looking back, like this year, and I've t- I'd say this on my Instagram, like, this year's been the worst financial year for me ever in my life since I've been in business, especially like I think we're backwards to 150 grand this year compared to last year, which is yeah. huge, right? Yeah. Massive. And that takes its toll. That's hard. But being able to plan and look forward that, you yeah, know, this next 12 months, we should go really, really well off it, which is great. But yeah. the, it's been rough. And the hardest part was, you know, half the businesses are sort of partnered with people who would say, they're, they're not as experienced or anything like that. And so there's a lot of legwork. Um, you know, the, we implemented the marketing and the accounting team straight away. So we already had that developed with Three Kings and we launched it straight away as soon as we got the other businesses because I couldn't do it anymore. So after the startup and launch phase, it was all right. It was, it was fine. Like I, I've got a lot of, you know, I had at the time I had 12 staff in Three Kings that did everything except for see the clients. All I do is see clients, make file notes, process, progress the, 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 in the process from there and then I'd you know, had night time work on the other businesses and then my dumb ass decided that I had to enroll in my, my postgraduate as well so <laughs> doing that at the same time which is fantastic So how many stuff have you got in, in Three Kings now? Well as of today it's a little different so we've got we downsized a lot 
and I'm mm-hmm. going to go on out the door. And there's just too many hands in the kitchen. So the process was getting missed up, maxed up, missed up. So we've just yep. literally we got July rolling out the new process, new strategy, everything like that. Um, we've only got we're gonna have three in the advice team, so that we like myself as the only advisor, um, one offshore admin assistant, two onshore like office administrators. We're hiring for the second one now, so we should have um, we've got some good candidates who should be good by the end of the week. Um, so I have two there. Then we've got the power planning team, which is a contract, like a uh, one person that I'm trying to get on full time, but we have we contract them at the moment. Okay. Um, and then we have a we have an overflow implementation team we use if need be. But then the marketing team, there's four there, um, two in the account, or two onshore in the accounting team. So there's those ones as well. But for three kings, we we basically run off what's that like six people somewhere. Else. It, it, did you did you have to change? The number of clients that you were looking after as you've gone from 12 down to six or so or or, or was just in yeah, processes was, like what, what's happened with your client base no nah, they're growing so we had a yeah. we had, again last year like last financial year um we had a really a slow like I, I, I blocked out the books a lot yeah that year i was because we were that and then so what happened i blocked the books out then i'd hire a new person and that's how we got to 12 because we kept having to block the books out and one, yeah. I don't you've ever experienced this, but you go, all right, we'll get someone else that'll alleviate pressure. And just added more pressure, add another person. Things tend to, it's like if we had more, we double the staff or triple the staff we started with, yeah. everyone was busier than they were before. And I was like, this is doing my edit. Like, I do my, I'm going to have one person per task suit. Like, I don't know what's going on. So then I hired Jess, my office manager, onshore. So all off, because I had two onshore staff before, mm. they trained the offshore. And then when they left, I was like, oh, we'll just keep letting the offshore go. And kept building the offshore, thinking that I had the right people offshore to manage offshore, didn't like, yeah. which was a good experience. And then, um, so I got Jess, who's onshore, to to oversee and manage it all. And basically, we just stripped everything back and just noticed that you know people just ever there's too many people doing too much stuff. So mm-hmm. downside that got the new process in, and we should be looking at we, we're aiming for we're aiming for about sixty clients this like the next twelve months. So that should yep. be out. Uh, we'll drop Six- off. Yeah. 60 new ones or 60 ongoing clients? 60 new ones. So we've got 120 suits at clients at the moment. Yeah. Uh, you, <laughs> which I think since starting business, that's like, I think we've had 200 people come through the door. So, yeah, um, you know, whether we do, that's five years, I think. So, you know, we've had 200 people come, as in become a client. We've had a lot more yeah. come through the door, but to become yeah. a client, 80, you know, 75 of those have, either been disengaged because we've done what they need to do or whatever. So we're left with 126. We're probably going to disengage this year another 50 of those. Okay. Just people that, you know, I, you get, I get a lot of people that sort of come on and we've got multiple packages to downgrade to and they get to sort of holding pattern and they want to stay on just so that they've got you at the end of the phone in case something goes wrong. Hmm. There's nothing really else to do there. So there's the people like that where we'll be disengaging from a formal package and just they'll they'll still remain in the system as an inactive client until something else comes on, but they can contact and pay an hourly rate just to chat as they need, just save them some money on that front. And then we want to get 60, so that takes down like 70, 75, we want to get 60 ideal clients. So we've got a real marketing strategy now behind what we're looking for. We're trying to get our packages are sort of the funnel we run. It's funneled from our marketing, like our, our social media marketing and then our online course, so like the do-it-yourself course. Oh, yeah. idea is like our perfect lead funnel goes, they, they do the course, they get to the end of the course, they then upgrade to the financial coaching model, which is then we do we do it with you. So same yeah. as the online course. And this, is, this will never happen because people will skip this step. But the idea is they finish that, they upgrade to the financial coaching, they finish the parts in the coaching, and then they upgrade to foundations, which is super insurance, cash flow, debt, then they upgrade to growth. They start investing, you know, on top of those foundations. And then, if they're the right candidate, then we build to the accelerator. And in the accelerator, that's when we do you know, debt recycling, SMSF, and all that stuff. So structures, all that stuff. So and then the business planning as well. So ideally, that's sort of what our funnel looks like. And we have a target amount in each place. So I would be, I don't want many of the accelerator clients, even though they're top, you know, top premium. So they're kind of your highest fee paying ones. They are, but they're but they're also hard to work. Yeah, we only want 20. I don't really want to hold more than 20 SMSFs on the book at any time. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So what's the co- can you can you tell us a little bit about the course, what's involved in that, and, and like how have you built it? Yeah, so we use Thinkific um, on like course. Like it's, it's getting redone now. It should be launched in August. We just originally had – it was like a – because I've done, I've done YouTube videos and 
online things before where I take people through the 12 steps of the main 12 main steps of advice, right? Going from, you know, foundations and financial literacy, money mindset, cash flow, budgeting, insurances, and move through essentially the same process we as advisors go through in their checklist. Like, you know, what does that process look like? You know, you've got to have your super and your insurance set up before you move into investing and, and all those things. Right? Obviously, we do all them at once, but showing the client how our heads kind of work, like rather, you know, a lot of people come and they don't have 20 cents to their name. I want to invest 10 grand. You're like, well, why? Hang on. Let's take a step back. Like, that stuff going to solve your, your, your issues. So we go through that and it goes all the way up into then talking about estates, you know, estate planning into, you know, different, then it breaks into more topical. So like property, shares, leverage, you know, all that stuff, types of super funds. There's no... No advice. It's not a course that you jump on at the end. You go, wow, it's just a, an educational piece to show people how to build. And, and what we get from most of that is that they like the idea of marketing wise, the idea is if, if you, like I say to people, Tom, this is, I don't do, I'm a kid from the West. Like I don't, I'm not doing anything that you can't do. If you want to go and study and learn it, you will. I'm just doing shit that you're not going to do, right? And it, it doesn't matter. You can, people sit there and say, well, I can do what you do. Well, then do it. If you're going to do it, do it. If you can, fantastic. I want you to save that money. But if you're not going to do it, then shut up, right? And so the idea of that whole process is kind of to build people, realistically, the exact thing we go through, but getting to the point where they go, shit, I, this isn't for me. Like I'm, I need more help than this. But at the same time, they have that knowledge. Like they're learning that, that most people will get to about the insurance piece and they're like, yep, 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 learning heaps, but I knew a lot like this is just yeah, helping me. And then they get past that and we get into, all right, what are we going to do with geared investments? Or, you know, we go to tax structures and we start breaking down the strategic side of things. And they go, oh, like this. Now, even just simple finance, you get to a point in one of the course where it teaches you like financial calculator stuff, like how to just work out present value, right? Or, or future value, like just doing things like that. And people are like, oh, shit. You know? And then you're taking account of inflation and the risk and risk adjusted returns. And then they're like, all right. And then were, that, that's generally what prompts them to go. And at each part of the course, you know, if you want to get in touch, have a chat, book in here, and then they go to the next part. And that's essential. But at the moment, it was just a 12 step course. And I sold it as, yeah, 90 days for 49 bucks or something. So you get it done in three months, trying to yeah. fresh out people through it, I guess. And then there was the unlimited, which you pay 99. But it wasn't very good. I just, I essentially did it one day because someone had asked me for it. And, um, I basically just pulled all my content out of YouTube, chucked it up there, put a few documents in there and stuff. And, you know, just let, left it up there and market it and it did all right. But now we're going to break it up into one module per month. So we're going to bring, we're going to sell the modules individually. So it'll be one through to 12. Yeah. But they can also buy the bundle for a discount and that way. That they way get released each month. They get released once a yeah, month. Yeah. And then our social yeah. media content for that month will will prioritize that topic and then yeah. release it off the back of that. So we did that. I've got a whole team working on that. Um, it's a bit of fun. It's, yeah, it's not about the, the revenue or anything. It doesn't really make a difference in our bottom line, but um, it's a bit of fun, you know, a bit of fun. Something sort of, I wanted to be able to, I want to be able to point people in the direction. I've always prided myself. We don't take comms or we're a flat fee business as well. So I've always prided myself on being able to show real value or equal clients into the package that actually works for them, not, you know, up, you know, these salespeople online these days, everything's a high ticket sale and this and that, right? I, I, I really want to be able to prioritize okay, right at this point, this is where you belong. And then when they get to that point, all right, we need to upgrade to that, but then we can come. Yeah, you know, I really like having that and being able to have those packages, that the online version, I can do the whole, you know, well, if you want to do it yourself, there it is, you know, 99 mm-hmm. bucks, go through your boots. That's fine. I, if you want to do it, do it. And then I don't really, it's it sort of, it was a bit of a struggle because we got people going from there upgrading to financial coaching and in financial coaching, it's just education and we just catch up. And they get to the point where they're like, right, I need access. So there's no, so there's no formal financial advice in that package either. You, you're just explaining to them what was in the course. So it never used to be. The financial coaching used to be essentially you pay me per month and you can have 45 minutes with me every month and ask them whatever you want, right? Ah, uh, yeah. I like it. Whatever you want. And that's what it was. And it was really good because that's like, it's, no, it's, 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 it's just coaching. It's just mentoring. And it's like, there's no red tape behind it, right? So it was yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a great profit margin on that. But, the problem was I, was I was putting the wrong people in there. And so I kept saying to them, you know, hey, you need, at this point, we're going to need to go to some of like proper advice. And we'd get there. And we'd get there quick because we focus on cash flow and whatever. And we'd get there quick. And then by the time we got there, an upgrade. And they're used to monthly meetings. And now you're doing two meetings a year or like they can catch up with whatever they want. But they're like, hey, why aren't we meeting this month? Like, well, you don't pay for that. Now. now all the work's done in the background for you. That's what yeah. you're paying for. Rather than they used to say, pay 300 bucks a month and I get to sit in front of him for 45 minutes an hour. That was value to them, you know? So yeah, yeah. it was a really hard transition, which we're working on now too. Mm. Yep. 
So we, so where the sixty clients going to come from? Your whole marketing plan online, yeah. Instagram. Yeah, so we do about we do about twelve leads a month as a minimum at the moment. Yeah, right. And we take on we take this year we took on roughly half of them um, from lead. Like the conversion rate was just under fifty percent from lead to client. Yeah, but I'm hoping that this year we we have a more a higher high conversion rate because a lot of those even though we almost clipped fifty percent on the conversion from lead to client, a lot there was a lot of turn away. So. A lot of a lot of turn away from us. I'm hoping this year we can target. Like I'm hoping I can get, you know, eighty ideal clients and be able to select from those. Um, yeah, more of the right person inquiring rather than turning away. Yeah, of them. Well, we we ran ads last year and we got we got like thirty leads a month off the ads. You're right. The trash. trash. Oh, were they? I don't know how many advisors around Sydney or around the country got rich off me last year. But I was just looking them left front. I don't know they were um. They're good ones too. Like I'm like really good clients. Like I, we had one guy, well, there's four of them all around the same time. And they were like, one was like a, a big ex-CEO of something and he had multiple structures. I actually think I talked to you about two of them, but um, <laughs> multiple structures and all this stuff, and which I love, but I have a rule that because my ideal client's younger and we want to build through the phases, like we want, to, want it to be a journey, I don't really take on complex stuff if it's already established. Yeah, go to yeah, like I'll build, we'll do SMSFs and trust and everything, but I want to build to that in my plan. I don't want to get in the middle of somebody else's mess and then try and fix it. Like it's just not a jam. I just don't. don't yeah. yeah, yeah. You even comment on your website to say, I was reading before, kind of something along the lines of like, if we can help you, we'll help you. But if we can't, we'll tell you. And we, we might be a bit blunt about it, but but we'll, you know, we'll tell you what you need to hear. So you're really, you're really hyper-focused on who you do work with and who you don't, which – a, a lot of other financial advisors, particularly when they're first starting, they'll just they'll just take whatever work they can to try and get some dollars through the door. And I, yeah, I think I was I was pretty strict on that from the start too. Like I um like I, I started my business with six clients that came to front to came with me from a, like an old firm I used to work work yeah. with. Um, I brought yeah I took them from there all the way through, and there's only six of them. And the first I think the first twelve months I averaged like. Four thousand dollars a month in revenue. Like I was yeah. the first year, I was going backwards because I was turning away. So like I'll take a one client a month, and yeah, every every advisor meeting I went to, they're like, "You take whoever you can at the start." And I'm like, oh, "Come on, God, I'm sitting here this <laughs> yeah, problem's ten years old, and I'm gonna be there." Yeah, well, you hear like you I now doing this podcast. I, I talk to a lot of people that have just kind of started business, and they go through this stage of they'll take everything that they possibly can in the beginning to to get some dollars through the door, but then. Two years down the track, they've got this this kind of client base who who they really don't want to work with, and then they've got a problem of well, how do they move off some of those clients? Do they terminate their services? Do they try and sell part of the client base to someone else that is more suited to servicing them? So it's a kind of a short term benefit, but then it creates a bit of a medium term problem for them as yeah, the books start to fill up. It's not nice, man. I I don't like it. Like yeah, yeah. stacking clients sucks. It's very, yeah, yeah. especially well, we've got a lot now. Like what a what I've got to fix is, and I think it's important though. Like I made a lot less money in the last five years than I could have by not doing it. Right? Mm. Like I don't know. What, I don't know how big I'd be. I don't know what if I just. But I, I especially my biggest one is I got to be able to like being on the phone with you. Like I got to enjoy chatting with you. And um, the hard part now is we've got all of our clients are people I like. Yeah. But there's maybe twenty five percent of them the people I really like, but they're not the ideal client. Yeah. And that's where I have to start. Tra- and that, 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 this is going to be hard. It's going to. I'm not going to enjoy those conversations, you know. Yeah, yeah. How do you find like we were, as we were talking before before we pressed record, like your your approach online and the things that you talk about uh, and the way that you 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 deal with things very different to the 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 traditional financial advisor. Do you do you come up against much? I don't know pushback in the industry of people saying, "Oh, you don't." You don't talk like other people. You don't. You don't look like them. Yeah, you know. Do, do, you, do you get any of that, or, or do people just don't even don't even care? Nah, to be fair, I don't really hang out with the industry too much. I oh, didn't think so. <laughs> like we do, we have like some advisor ladies and stuff, and they yeah, dress different and stuff. But um, now nah, most of those people are right. I got it heaps at the yeah. start. It's sort of like, oh, you what you do does won't work, won't work. Yeah, probably the biggest point because I'll never change. Like I'll never change. And the funniest thing I learned at the start when picking clients was the people who told me how for it they were, how we usually the, the worst ones. So like mm. 
everyone was for me being up front and abrupt until it was towards them. Like, you know, they'd come on, yeah, all right. love your, your, your blunt approach. I'm like, I'm not blunt. I'm just not going to sugarcoat shit. I'm going to talk yeah. out the book and just know that it's always from, once you become a client of mine, you, you, you treat your money like mine. Like, I can't. Mm-hmm. And that's, to be fair, that's probably something I'm going to change this year is trying to reduce my care factor a little bit because um, it becomes hard. It becomes hard, like, constantly, I guess, like, I, I lost a couple of clients last year who were friends of mine mm. because they didn't want to take the advice. Like, they they ring me about a random stock their friend talking. We're getting blow ups over it because I'd be like, you're an idiot. This is the stupidest year, but my mate's mate, mate. And I'm like, bro, it's going to lose your 30 grand. Like, it, it's terrible on paper. And if he has insider knowledge, like, why isn't he all in? You know, like, all this crazy shit. And then um, they all lost money. And I was like, and I cared. And I was like, bro. And, uh, like, I got a message the other day from a mate of mine. He was like, look, we they, when we paused, they basically said to me, like, like, the advice kind of got in between us for a bit because you were so blunt. Like, because I'd be sitting in a meeting and I have a, a male who would be talking down to the female next to me. And they're both my friends. And I'd be like, wait, shut your mouth. Don't speak to her like that. You're in the wrong. And, like. Like, I'll do it. Like, out of love. I'm not sitting here trying to like you, but they, they don't speak to someone. I didn't get it to you. I'd say the same thing. Like, don't speak to your partner in front of me like that. Yeah. Or at all. Like, when, especially when you're wrong. And so then, like, I'd get in between things because I cared too much. And, like, I'd stir shit up. I'd have people like, oh, yeah, our relationships are great. And then in the media, I'd be bringing stuff up. And, like, they're like, cool, shit. We've really got to think about this. And I, I, it's hard because you'll find that balance. So I would, especially when we're talking psychology and relationships. So, mm-hmm. the biggest one I got. Probably the biggest pushback is from my life. I had clients like that who were like, yeah, we love it. How blunt you are. Then I jump with the meeting. I'm like, why you know, Why in the bag? It's like, what are you doing? Why are you wasting all your money? What are you doing this for? And they'd be yeah. like, oh, no, nah, no. Nah, you're just being, yeah, you, you're attacking me. I'm like, you want to be blunt, bro. Like, everyone wants to be blunt until it's to them. Until it's to them. Do you find, like, so some of that, like those comments where you've spoken to me and talking about their partner or whatever, I've seen you go on a rant on Instagram about it, whether you're writing about it or you're, you're kind of ranting to the phone. Do you, do your DMs then blow up whenever you do one of those things? People responding back either positively or negatively to it. Well, it's like without well, sounding like a cockhead, no one really responds negative. Like that's everyone's too scared. Like once you sort of yeah. that, like, that, and that's probably the biggest because you're calling them out. Well, that's probably the biggest benefit, also because they know I'll just jump in the rig. But that's probably the the big, biggest benefit of of speaking my mind is I've never once said not said anything I don't believe in. I've never once held back. So people. Like my my engagement for ages was so low. I had this really good engagement for a while, yeah. and I remember one time one person barked back at me, and I was like, "Sweet, let's like let's have a chat about it," and just said my mind. And there's someone else. I remember another time someone was like, "Oh, the way you speak's not professional." I was like, "Good." I was like, and like my mum did this. My mum was like, "Ryan, listen, tell you some of the things you say on your Instagram. Like it's not very good for a business position. I wouldn't want to be a client." I said, "Guess what? My marketing's working because you are not my ideal client." Yeah. Yeah. And people think that's a bad thing. What they don't realize is what I gain off the other side of that. The people I speak to hear what I say. Um, but the downside is I don't get much engagement because no one really pushes back. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah did, did, did that turn a corner for you at some stage around like, you know, you're you're attracting the right type of person? Was, was that from day one or was it once you found your rhythm of, I'm going to say what I want to say and, and then you started attracting the right person? No, I got I got a lot at the start. I don't know where it came from. I got a lot of like eastern suburbs executives. Yeah, okay. I think because I was just transitioning from still wearing a suit and stuff, and yeah, um, I wasn't dressing fully like me. I was still being semi-professional, and I think they they there's a lot of that culture. Like you know, I don't know how to explain it. I I I, I this is what made me change is because they they have lots of money. This guy's good at managing money. He's kind of the dude at the party I'd like to hang out with, but. And so they sort of had this, I had this thing with all these high flying executives who being high flying executives doing all the things they do after work and everything. And they think, yeah, this is the dude. And then, but they were the most full of shit people I've ever met. You know? Yeah. But then when I was like, like I thought, I took them on, like, yeah, this is cool. And then they were the hardest kind of, uh, hardest kind of ways to go about it because they, they were full of it the most, you know? Um, so I had to, I had to change. So I had at one point, I had six thousand, six and a half thousand followers on my IG in 2018 or something like that and i was getting and this is like i was startup so i had a like i was getting i don't know maybe 10 leads a week mm. off Instagram, organic doing nothing and i was like oh this is crazy i'd convert maybe one in 20 of those right and, okay. and the one and the ones i did was a lot they looked like the ideal client on the outside but they weren't so then i had to change all that so i refreshed started a new instagram we've got a whole new marketing strategy now yeah after many years of great content and everything maybe just shy of three thousand followers but 
we close, we, we, we take on probably it, like almost a hundred percent of clients that con- contact us through Instagram now. Yeah. Right. Um, what are your plans for the business going forward from, from here? Do you, do you plan on just keeping it as a single advisor business? Do you, do you want to try and grow it? Are you, are you bringing on an advisor? What do you think from here? Yeah, we played around with all the ideas. Um, we launched a new process, new strategy from August. So July is our planning month. The idea is to essentially completely build out my silo as a financial advisor. So I'm trying to build a framework so that yeah, I, I need to maximize. I believe I need to max myself out with clients first and watch how it operates before I can bring someone else on. We almost brought someone on last year because uh, I just had enough. But these twelve months, well, the whole idea behind those sixty clients will get us to the point where my silo we build with a perfect team. And then I will look. We, we've got two more advisors in mind that'll come next. There'll be a, a strategic advisor, like for the complex stuff, and then a, a retiree advisor. Yeah. Uh, because we're getting more and more clients sent through their parents and stuff, and they don't even see anyone else. But you now I do it all, but I don't love it. Um, yeah, okay. yeah. But then, and then, then the third advisor will replace me, and I'll step back into like a coaching role and oversee the businesses. So that's that's the five to ten year. Um, but the goal for this financial year is to completely fill out my silo so we can then replicate that again. Yeah, fill you up this year and then the year after. Like, well, we're full, yeah, that's the thing though. We're full now, but it's- I was going to say 120-something, but in most businesses, you would say you were full. We are, we are. So that's what I'm saying. So we've got to, I've got to, but the, it's full with like from a cost to rev, revenue to cost perspective, from a time perspective, it's just not efficient. So that's why we got to, we're going to get rid of color about twenty five percent of them, yeah, um, and then replace. That'll take us back up. We want we want about one thirty one forty clients to make that work properly, because then that way I have enough to sort of spit out to another advisor once we get them. But I think that'll work properly. That's the silo number, like from a revenue like cost base to revenue projection, and then hopefully we can we can repeat that for next year. Mm, fantastic, I'll be I'll be watching it long. Um, and particularly with all the other businesses that you uh, that you it mentioned at the start, it can't be worse than this year. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, like when you said you went backwards, is that because you were pumping money into all of these, starting up these other businesses? Yeah, it was. Uh, but also, we we had a we had a rough year through Kings with staff and stuff, and all that changes. And um, we had like, website issues. All the we had, we got like a had like a cyber scare. We had lots of stuff. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Everyone had one of them, I think. But we had a we had a couple of stuff and. Bought all these other businesses, and what usually happens is Three Kings continues to pump and support the shortfall. But then we had probably three months where, because of efficiency stuff, I was um, I was pausing fees and everything to try and get things back to where after we had the staff changes. Yeah. Um, and that three months was rough, man, because there was no yeah. looking the surplus coming through to fund us. Everything was just do 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 But now we're back. This year looks. I'm hoping. I don't think I'll get a great ROI on the 350, but um, compound over the next two years, you might be right. Yeah, be right. Yeah. Good. Ryan, thank you for joining me this afternoon. I appreciate you fitting me in your uh, in your busy schedule to, uh, to record a podcast. It's been great to catch up with you. No worries, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks.